Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, Honourable Vice President of the, uh, of the Parliament, Mr. Tajani, dear Antonio. It's always very nice to address together with you because we share the same views on many issues. I'm continuing your job in many areas, which you already mentioned. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to Brussels. Thank you very much for coming uh, to discuss with us on the future of European economy. For this commission, to make Europe a better place to be an entrepreneur is a very important topic. And to this end, we have decided to work less, but harder. Better regulation is one of our priority areas. And one figure which illustrates what better regulation means today is that we are doing much less rulemaking than before, some 80% less than in previous years. Because we want to concentrate on big things instead of small things. So the basic principle in the Commission is to be big in big and small in small, and use our regulatory power for the issues which are too large to be solved only in national level. And that's why the structure of the Commission is also different. We are cooperating much more than before. We are focusing on larger entities and try to prioritize much better than before what, is, what are the issues which need to be addressed in the European level? And all the rest can be solved in national or in lower level, in regional level. Ladies and gentlemen, I will raise only three topics. First, investment. Second, single market. And, and third, trade. Juncker Commission wanted to concentrate on investment in Europe because it's the only thing which is still bringing, blinking red if you compare the previous years. We are, we are some um, uh, 300 billion per year behind long-term average in investment. And this is becoming really a problem for us. Our competi competitors are investing much more than we are. And every old entrepreneurs understand that if you don't invest in something, then there's a risk that you lose your competitiveness. So that's why boosting investment throughout Europe is our priority. One vehicle to help entrepreneurs to invest more in Europe is EFSI, European Fund for Strategic Investment. It has been up and running already a year, and results are quite uh, much telling. We have 115 industrial and infrastructure projects which have got financing from EFSI. FC is part of European Investment Bank and it, it concentrates on higher risk private projects. In addition to this, we have 210 agreements between local banks, intermediary banks and EFSI backed funds on small and medium size and mid cap company financing. According to our calculation and assessment, these 210 agreements will provide financing to 290,000 European SMEs and mid-caps. 290,000 European SMEs and mid-caps. And this is the result of the first year. So my one, uh, number one message is that if you think that there's a lack of risk financing, please push your local banks to look at the opportunities for the EIB slash FC has to offer. Because it's the way how small and medium-sized companies can benefit from EU financing. And the best thing is that there is not bureaucracy at all. So once your bank got interested in this opportunity, then you are a client of the bank. And the relationship is just a normal client-bank um, relationship without no any bureaucracy. In the case you want to do a little bit bigger investment, you can contact directly EIB. The only thing you have to know is the phone number of the local branch of EIB in your country. And they will, they will help you further. So, as I said before, EI, uh, FC idea is to provide financing to private investment, which you cannot find completely from the market. Of course, all the projects must be economically viable and reasonable. But for, if for some reason private sources cannot finance entire project, FC can possibly bring uh, the, the missing link to the financial package. 
I do encourage you to look at these opportunities. FC has a wide range of toolbox. It provides loans, guarantees, equity, quasi-equity. It's very flexible too for entrepreneurs. Next, I will move on to the business environment. Everybody is saying and telling the same story. In order to boost investment, you need stable regulatory environment. And this is why Commission is so keen to push forward various single market projects. It's always much better to have one regulation instead of 28, if you want to trade across the border. So that's why digital single market, energy market union, capital market union, circular economy package, low carbon mobility package, they all are single market projects, which aim is to harmonize the regulatory environment so that for the customers and for the entrepreneurs, there's only one regulation according which you have to uh, operate throughout Europe. Finally, on trade, Vice President Tajani already mentioned trade policy. It's very important part when part of our, finance, uh, our economic strategy because it helps us to modernize the European economy. Five years ago, we finalized our uh, agreement with South Korea. And since that, the EU's export to Korea has increased 55%. 55%. So this is a good, one good example of the importance of trade uh, agreements. Now we have already concluded our negotiations with Canada, which would open public pro procurement to European entrepreneurs. It, it will um, make investments much easier. It will create new opportunities. And the main challenge at the moment is that the member states are strong enough to, uh, to agree with this uh, agreement and endorse it and accept it. And then the national and regional parliaments could also ratify it later on. So if you agree with us on the logic of the importance of uh, trade agreements, please be vocal and advise your legislators to push through CETA. We are just about finali finalizing a trade agreement with Japan, which importance to the European companies would be even higher than the one uh, uh, with uh, South Korea. Final point related to trade. We have strengthened our economic diplomacy agenda, which means that we try to hear and listen much more carefully than before the needs of SMEs. What the Commission could do in order to help you to go to the markets of third countries. So, as uh, Vice President Tajani said, Chamber of Commerce plays a crucial role also in economic diplomacy because you are our ears and eyes and very good uh, way to communicate and pass and convey the messages to either direction. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want to focus on big things. We want to use our regulatory power so that it will level the playing field for entrepreneurs and for their customers. We want to put special, special emphasis to single market and to trade. But in order to get all these initiatives through, we need your support. You are a stakeholder of the EU, and stakeholders usually have some return expectations. So let your voice be heard by us, but also by your, your own national governments. Thank you very much.